Hello and welcome back to this daily series of devotional videos for Open Door Church in Sunbury uh, with me Bruce Townsend. If you joined me for my last video I was talking about Genesis chapter 1 and the creation of the world. Today I just want to talk a bit about the creation of man and draw a few lessons out of that. So I'm reading a few verses from Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Genesis 1 verse 26, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, and the birds in the sky, over the livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. These couple of chapters tell us something about the God who created us, tell us something about ourselves, and they tell us something about community and the importance of community. First of all, we see God created man in his image, and we see God speaking to himself in the plural, let us make man in our image may be the first instance in the Bible of a reference, sideways reference to the Trinity. God who is not just one person, but three persons, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not just one, but three, not just three, but one. As some people, uh, Muslims, Unitarians, would accuse Christians of polytheism because of this theology, this idea, but... The trouble is we tend to anthropomorphise God, to reduce him to something almost human. God is not an individual as we are. He is not simply a bigger and better version of you or of me. He is much more than that. He is, as we see him in the scripture, three in one. Not spelled out, the word Trinity, but we see those three personas. It's been many attempts to explain, to to analogize it, for example, so a little can of three-in-one oil, which apparently is a lubricant, and apparently it's a cleaner, but don't try that on your best shirt, and it prevents rust and tarnish. Three personas, if you like, three functions, all in one. Pretty imperfect analogy, a bit rubbish really. <clears throat> but what we see, as God creates mankind in his image, he creates mankind in a kind of a trinity, male, female and community. I've got uh, bad news for you, you are not created in the image of God. I am not created in the image of God, neither you nor I could possibly embody or contain the image of God. We are created in God's image, male, female, black, white, Asian, African, European, Inuit, Aboriginal. That's why racism is not just morally wrong and not just daft, but it's theologically wrong because it's not possible that any one race could, could embody God. God cannot be identified with one race. We, mankind, the human species, the human race, was created in God's image and we are all a part of that. And in that, God embodies not just individuality, but community as well. And he shows to us things like selflessness, the pursuit of commonality, not just the gender of one individual. We can see that very much in the New Testament as the Father and the Son and the Spirit work together for the common aim of our salvation. And that theme is expanded in chapter 2. Genesis 1, it's about the origin of the earth and the universe and everything in it. Genesis 2 is much more about mankind as an advanced community, modern man, or what we might call civilization. There is cultivation, there's a garden, there is irrigation, rivers that water not just their banks and whatever happens to be growing there, but the garden that God has planted. There's interest in precious and beautiful things, gold, perfume, precious stones, maybe a hint there of the development of currency. 
there's domestication of livestock as distinct from wild animals. There's my first career, taxonomy, the naming of different kinds of creatures, all found there, all elements, not just of a primitive species, but a civilization, a community functioning together. The difference between the world of Genesis 1 and the world of Genesis 2 is dramatic and huge, and it's brought about for and through mankind in community. Working together as a unit, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. Unfortunately, Donald Trump said that, but we'll give him that one. It's pretty good and biblical. Then we find that God appointed man to rule and to care. To rule meaning to subdue or have dominion over. They may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals. We can see that in action no more so than in our own country. Everywhere has been brought under control. If it hasn't been built on, it's been planted. Even nature reserves are managed and controlled for our benefit and our enjoyment. <clears throat> but then God said the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. We were just not created and the earth was not given to us just to exploit for our pleasure and benefit. We are custodians of it. That means that we should be concerned about things like climate change. We should be concerned about pollution and filling the oceans with plastic. We should be concerned about the hundreds of species facing extinction as a result of human activity. I was just reading recently, there's more than 500 species that are down to fewer than a thousand individuals are likely to slip into extinction over the next few years. Beautiful things that God's created that we are destroying. The issues that we faced before coronavirus have not gone away. They are still here. And we do it not just because it's a divine appointment, but we're to care out of self-interest. We live on a fragile earth with limited resources and we'd better learn to take care of it. So said Frank Borman, one of the first, first three men to fly around the moon and to see the earth hanging in space at a distance from the distance of the moon and to really see and understand the fragility of what we've been given as well as the beauty of it. Then after appointing them, God also blessed them. He provided for them water, food. He provided them, you know, grain to make bread and pasta, though it probably took a while for them to work out how to do that. Trees with fruit to taste and, and savour provided food, raw materials for building homes like this one that I'm sitting in now and, and other places and other things. This this amazing little device that I'm recording this video on, all built from the raw materials that God created and gave us. But he blessed us with something greater than that as well. And in chapter 2 verse 7 it says, The Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. That there contains a play on words that doesn't really come out in the English. Adam sounds like Adama, which is Hebrew for ground. The word for man is Adam. Adam, man, when you read them in the English, in the Hebrew, they're the same word. The New International Commentary says in the Hebrew it would read more like God formed earthling from the earth. Elsewhere in in the Old Testament, the image of a potter is used, forming something from clay. But wherever that imagery is used, it's with different verbs or different sentence constructions. That is not the meaning and the essence of what is being said here. The emphasis here is twofold. Firstly, it's on man being created not from nothing, but from something that already existed. 96% of our DNA, I'm told, is the same as a chimpanzee. 80% of our DNA is the same as a cow, 61% is the same as a fruit fly, and 60% is the same as a banana. You are 60% banana, but you never thought of that. It's true. We were made out of something that already existed. But on the other hand, man was elevated for a special purpose. Uh, in 1 Kings 16, God says to Baasha, king of Israel, I lifted you up from the dust and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. 
And there's a similar analogy used multiple times in the Old Testament where this idea of being raised out of the dust means being elevated out of something to something higher, something at a higher level. Victor P. Hamilton said, man is formed from dust but to be in control of a garden. It's that analogy of coming out of the earth to be in charge of the earth. So man is elevated from out of creation and you can see that in the difference between us and, and wild animals, the, the creativity, the arts, the ability to contemplate, to think in the abstract. There are so many things that set mankind apart that are difficult to explain, if you like, in evolutionary terms. And there is this sense that God has raised man up for something special. And then God breathed his own breath into him. That is not said of any other creature in Genesis 1 and chapter 2. God breathed into him the breath of life. The word for breath and spirit throughout the Bible are one and the same. Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. God gave us his Holy Spirit in a way that he did not give to the rest of creation. He continues to breathe his Holy Spirit into us today. God has made us in his image, not just mankind as individuals, but mankind as a community, as a group of people designed to function as community, not just pursuing our own individual agendas. He gave us authority to rule, but along with that comes a responsibility to care for that which we're ruling over. And then he blessed us with his Holy Spirit and he still does that today and he still offers to fill us with his Holy Spirit day by day to give us power to live by. So Father, thank you for this wonderful revelation that you've given us, this understanding that we are for something more than just existing. But Lord, you breathed into us the breath of life, your spirit, to be and to do greater things. But Father, we pray day by day you continue to fill us with our Holy Spirit that we might in some small way in our communities and in our churches, in our groups, embody something of your image and express something of your image. Lord, that we might rule as you would have us rule in our lives, in our places, and that you will continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit day by day. Amen.